What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel ReefRx. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Going to give you a weekend update on my tanks. I'm also going to talk about uh, how to enter into the contest for the giveaway of the Orpec um, Coral lens that you can use on your phone or your camera. And then we're going to talk about a couple leaks that I've had uh, over the past few weeks. I had two different leaks. Uh, we'll talk about what I did wrong, what I should have done, and how you can prevent that going forward in your tank. So first we'll start off with the water box 110.4. Everything's doing really good. I fragged up uh, some corals here. So I got these Sonic Flare Zoas, which seem to be pretty popular. Selling those at my local um, Reef Club uh, website page, whatever you want to call it, forum, I guess would be the better word to use. And also I'm selling some of these frags on eBay as well. So I'll drop a link in the description for my eBay. It's, um, it's what's my eBay called? It's reef underscore rx is my eBay, so you can check that out. Got these leather corals here. The leather corals are pretty hard to get them to stay on the frag. They don't really stay with glue, so you have to use like a rubber band. Um, so I think I got those ones stuck. It looks like one might be falling off, so I got to tend to that. And then on the right side of the tank, I have some more frags. I have some blastos I fragged out. I got some favias. Picked up another Zoa frag, I believe that's called the Eagle Eye Zoa frag. So those are doing pretty good. Everything in the tank's doing well. I'm getting ready to go away uh, on Monday for work. I'm gonna be away for five days. So I just did like all my maintenance that I need to do to my tanks, like filling up my ATO containers. I cleaned some of the ATO sensors with some alcohol just to make sure they don't malfunction because I had that problem before. And then I filled up my auto fish feeders. My wife will be here and she can feed the fish and everything, but I just, just in case um, she's not available, I'll use the auto feeders. And um, that's pretty much it that I did. I'm trying to think what else I did to prepare. Not a whole lot. I mean, everything's pretty much automated. The only thing I have to do is I just feed the fish. So I haven't done a water change since January, since I've been dosing all for reef. So it's been going really well. And, um, you know, the corals, you can see they're doing great. So I'm very happy with the success that I've had with that. So um, let's talk about the giveaway real quick. So the giveaway um, to enter, just in the comments, tell me what you're excited to take a picture of your tank, like what coral you want to take a picture with with this lens. And then send me an email at billies.reef.rx at gmail.com. And give me your uh, address and just say that you're interested in the prize and then once I hit the 300 subscribers I'll select someone and I'll get that shipped out to you um, so it's a coral lens extra wide viewer it comes with like three different lenses and then a magnifying lens with a clip you can clip on your phone you can use it for your camera um, but it's really cool so um, like I said drop a comment and then send me an email and you'll be entered into that contest and you oh you got to be subscribed so make sure you subscribe and then uh, let's talk about these leaks. So uh, a few weeks ago, so the first leak, we'll go over to my other tank here. So this is my 40 gallon tank, my anemone tank. So I came home and there was a bunch of water over here on the floor near my ATO container. What had happened was the Tunes 3155 ATO, let me turn the light on, that's better. The Tunes 3155 um, is the ATO I have for the ATO controller. It comes with like um, flexible tubing and it came loose out of here, like out of the port. So I removed that tubing, I put an RO tubing and then I put that um, locking mechanism in. So I did it on this tank and I also did it on my other tank to prevent it. So that took care of that. And then like two weeks later, I was over here tending to my culture. I was, I think I was setting up a new culture for my, my Fido my cat kept going around the corner over here like showing some interest I'm like so what are you looking at so I look over I had water pouring down from this thing so what happened was I put on the feed modes for my tank right and I recently installed this vacuum pump over here to help bring in fresh air from the outside so it pulls through um, all the way outside but it goes through this tank also because I had this hooked up uh, for my skimmer to the outside well I've done it a bunch of times never had an issue but this one time thank God I was home, it actually started to siphon from this tank. So it started siphoning down, it was leaking here, it was leaking over here when I have uh, another connection. So I had a leak here, I had the leak here. Oh, in the, I had, um, uh, what was it called? A, 
the CO2 scrubber canister. I had that there, so that was filled with water. Then I had a big CO2 scrubber canister here, which was also filled with water, and it was leaking here. Thank God it didn't get into my uh, ozone generator because that would have been some expensive damage. Plus, if it got into this side of the tank, I mean, you see all the wires there. That that wouldn't have been good. I, I have to do something with these wires. I'm, I was going to get a frag tank to put up on the side of my tank and plumb it all in together. I was going to use the frag tank stand for all my wiring so I'd have more room. But I might be moving now, so that project's on hold because if I move, I'm going into a house and I'll have massive size frag tanks. It's going to be a lot different. So, um, so the bag, so the uh, check valves. You got to use check valves. So I disconnect. I took this one offline, and then I put a check valve on my other one. I'll hook this up eventually, but I just need to get a check valve for this one. So use a check valve so you can't get that backflow of siphon. But that's what happened, and like I said, luckily I was home. It wasn't a ton of water. It could have been a lot worse. Um, so here's the 40 gallon. It's really not much with this tank as there really is never an update. The anemones, I think another one split again. It's kind of hard to tell because they're so big. Sorry about that. It's kind of hard to tell because they're so big. Um, but I think one more may have split. So clownfish are doing really well. The zoanth that I threw in here is doing really good. And then this Monty I threw in there is doing well also. Still got some bubble algae. I put five emerald crabs in this tank, so they still got some work to do, but they are constantly picking at them. It's just this rock I got the bubble algae on, it looks like. I don't really see any anywhere else. And then one of the crabs is right there. Don't know if you can see them, but they do a pretty good job keeping up with everything. Um, let's go take a look in the other room and I'll give you the update on my cultures. All right, so here's my cultures on the right. I have the brine shrimp culture. Um, not much in here, only a few left. I've been feeding these to my tank. I'm going to do away with this culture and just turn it into a pod culture. Um, and then on the left, I have my tigger pod culture. Really hard to see, but so I had a, about a 50% crash in this culture. I did a water change and um, I added some more pods in here just to help bring up the culture so it's actually looking pretty good now tanks nice and dirty um, so I do water changes on this tank about every three weeks and what I do is I take some airline tubing let me see if I can find it real quick right here all right so I take some airline tubing and I take some filter floss and I put it at the end of the tubing like this and then I use a zip tie to, to clamp it on there and I put this in the tank so this works so I don't suck up any pods because you don't want to do that and then I have a little valve on here so I can adjust the flow but the flow is already super slow with having this in there um, and it works out perfect I haven't gotten any pods uh, sucked through there so that's good and Let's see, so, and then I feed these guys uh, live phytoplankton, the culture I got going, so I feed those um, usually twice a week with the live. I put a little bit in there, and then I have the super concentrated that has like a bunch of different types of phytoplankton. I put a half ml, dilute it with some water, swirl it around, and then dump it into this tank. I did take out the airline tubing out of this tank because I watched a few videos and someone was saying they tried it without the airline tubing and they had better success. So after I had that like 50% crash of this tank, I decided to take it out and honestly, I think it's doing better without the airline tubing. So it's looking pretty good and then hopefully pretty soon I can start harvesting the pods. Like they're, hard, they're really hard to see and they're probably even harder to see on camera. But so they're doing good, and then like I said, the shrimp not a whole lot left. I've been feeding these to my uh, to my tanks, and like my fish love these guys. So that's it for the update. Um, like I said, don't forget to enter into that contest. Make sure you subscribe, drop a comment, and then shoot me an email, and you'll get entered. And then once I get 300 subscribers, and I get you know get get some entries, I'll go ahead and just randomly select someone. Probably will be doing some entries uh, or some giveaways for corals that have been fragging out in the future. So you don't want to miss out on those. So subscribe for that. And then also you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Billy's underscore reef underscore RX. And uh, I'll post the, There's a link in the description as well. And same with my TikTok. So, all right, guys, happy reefing. And uh, we'll chat soon.